this video I'm just going to do a brief introduction to the June 22 paper for Unit 2, Create a System to Manage Information, Part A. I'm just going to go briefly through the paper and just point out one or two things to you that would help maybe later on when you're actually designing and creating your database. So the paper, you get a paper version and the first few pages are so general information, instructions to invigilators, what you've got to submit, but it goes through that again. And then we've got the instructions to learners on page four. You need to read these tasks carefully, as it suggests, and plan your time, preparation and completion of the activities. You've got no internet access allowed. And you complete the tasks under supervision and your work will be kept securely at all times. You must work independently throughout the exam and not share any work with other learners. The invigilator is allowed to clarify wording but not provide you with any guidance for the completion of any of the activities or tasks. Part B is a separate part of the exam. I'm just covering A in this video. B we'll look at a bit later on. So in terms of outcomes for submission, you need to create a folder to submit your working. It's got to follow this naming convention. Centre number, which you all are given. Your registration number, that's your BTEC registration number, not a college registration number. Again, your centre will provide you with that. Your surname, the first letter of your first name, and then part A. And it gives us an example here. So one, two, three, four, five, underscore, then the registration number, underscore, surname, underscore, first initial, first name, underscore, part A. And in part A, you've got to submit six PDF documents. And it tells you specifically how to name your PDF documents. So for each activity, and it says in each activity what you've got to do, so don't think you've got to remember it from here. So, for example, activity one has to be named activity one underscore registration number underscore surname underscore first letter of first name, for example. It does remind you in the activities later on in the paper. OK, let's scroll down and have a further look. We've got a blank page and then we've actually got the scenario if you like. Just recommend that you spend 10 minutes reading through the scenario and the activities and I would fully recommend that when you read through the activities it does give you some little pointers indications if you like about things that you need to include. You can take notes or highlight the information on the paper and we are in fact going to be drawing a little design, sketching a design, you can do that on the paper. So let's have a look at the task scenario. We've been asked to create a database for Automatic Vending Services. Automatic Vending Services is a company that supplies, installs and manages drinks, vending machines for businesses. The database will record information about the staff it employs. There are several job positions in the company, for example, vending machine operator. Each staff member has one job position at a time, but they can have many job positions in their employment. So that suggests to me that a member, uh, a staff member can have many positions and that indeed a position can be occupied by many members of staff can have a position as well. Not all staff members work five days a week. Minimum number of days they can work is two. So that suggests to me straight away there's going to be some sort of validation. Once a year, each current staff member is given a performance grade. And the thing is that once a year, each current staff member is given a performance grade. The company does not record a past performance grade. Right, so that's just one per member of staff. OK, let's just have a look at the data. Right, it's a good idea at this point to have a look at the data. It's going to give us some indicators and we need to create a design from this. So let's just have a look at the headings 
The headings on the table are attributes. And I like to have a look at these and maybe identify primary keys first. So staff ref, that's probably going to be a primary key coming along. We've got performance grade ID, that's probably going to be a primary key coming along. Position ID, that will be a primary key. And then that's it with no more primary keys. OK, the other thing to look at, if you look at some of the column headings, this says staff start date, staff leaving date. So that probably belongs to the member of staff. We've also got a thing called a position start date and a position end date. Now, that might suggest it belongs to position, but you'll see why it's not just position when we go through the design. And then in terms of data, we've got staff and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight staff. But Ahmad is in twice because Ahmad has had two positions, position four and position five. Everyone else has just had one position. So that's why we've got two entries for Ahmad. But when you're creating the staff database, you don't put Ahmad in twice. You want to put them in once. So look at the grade performance uh, ID. So grade one ID is excellent. One is excellent again. Two stands for good. One excellent. Two good. One excellent. Three average. So that's the performance grades. In terms of the staff days per week, we said the minimum was two and up to five. And you can see there there's none less than two, no greater than five. So there is some validation on that. Staff start date, leaving date. So if we just look at Ahmad again, he's got a start date of the 12th of March. And again, it's repeat at 12th of March. But again, when you key in this in about the member of staff, you're not going to have two entries for Ahmad. You're going to have Ahmad with the start date of 12th of March. He does have a different position and the dates are there for his position number four. Starts on the 13th of March and ends on the 16th of April. Position five starts on the 17th of April. Okay, so then we've got a telephone number. And again, if you look at Ahmad, we've got two entries for the telephone number, but again, it's not going to go in twice. All the details about Ahmad's going to go in once. So look at these positions. All right, position three is manager. Position two is a vending machine operator. One is a salesperson. Let's have a look at the other salesperson one. So those are the positions. So the first activity, and this is the same on every paper that comes for this unit. The first activity is database relationship screen print. We've studied the data and what we've got to do is create an efficient database structure that minimizes data duplication, accepts the data provided, uses recognized naming conventions, and ensures data integrity. We must make sure we use all and only the fields shown in figure one in the sample data. Before we dive into access, I'm going to show you a way of designing your database. It's well worth spending some time at this stage and getting it right, because if you start your database, you create it and then realize it's not right and you want to change the structure of it. It's far more difficult changing it when you've created it and you've got data in. So it's well worth spending time on this design phase. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop this uh, little video clip. The next one that you look at will be showing you how to normalize your data using entity relationship diagrams.